Josefa Madigan, she's a solicitor, a mediator and a family law expert. She's going to tell us about family law cases and basically that family law cases can be solved calmly and there's no need to go to court. We do need and we do want to hear from you today. Of course, thousands of people got divorced last year and uh, quite a few ended up in the courts. Is there a way to avoid the pain and expense of that? Well, Josefa, our family law expert, she's here for the whole show. She will be taking your questions and your queries. It is a very expensive business, but she is going to show us the way through the maze. Yes. And the number of Irish adults who have divorced or separated in the past 25 years is over a quarter of a million. It can be a very expensive process and a really long and drawn out affair for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So Josefa Madigan is here with us. She's the author. She is a, lo a lawyer as well. Um, 80,000 people went through the process last year, but you're here to tell us that it doesn't have to cost that much money and uh, you can actually avoid the courts and the confrontations. You can, Amora, and um, I think, you know, Fiona Shackleton, who was Paul McCartney's solicitor, hit the nail on the head when she said a courtroom is a barbaric venue in which to pick over the carcass of a failed marriage. Mm. Um, and well, that was a very, very <laughs> difficult breakup, and the court yes. case was, of course, very mm -hmm. public as well, wasn't mm -hmm. it? I, I think she put it quite succinctly, though, in relation to the adversarial system, you know, for families who are going through separation or divorce. And I suppose what I am saying is that there is an, is an, an alternative to that, and that would be mediation or collaborative law. Mm. So, but, but say, okay, uh, a man and a wife are these days men or women, your partner, if you're married to somebody, and if you'd come around and say, okay, it's not working out, you can do what you want to do, and okay, we can do this the easy way or the hard way, we can go through the courts, or we can say, okay, we're just going our separate ways. And that won't, it'll be easy on your head, your heart, and on your wallet. So if you, if, if you come to that agreement, how much will that cost you? Hmm. Well, I suppose each case is different, yeah. um, Di, so it's sort of impossible to say. I, th I should say at the outset as well that in order to get a divorce in Ireland, you have to go into court, mm -hmm. even if it's on you consent. Have it has to be ruled okay. by a court. So unlike, say, a separation where you can go by deed um, as, as opposed to a judicial separation, you do have to have it ruled by court, but it can be done on consent. Yeah. But just, just explain to people at home who may not know the, the ins and outs of the yeah. 96 Divorce Act, you, what are the rules and, I suppose, the differences between a legal separation and a divorce? Okay. Well, on divorce, uh, there has to be no prospect of reconciliation between the parties. That would seem an obvious thing, but that has to be uh, one of the criteria fulfilled. Also, that you are four years separated out of the preceding five years, and also that proper provision is made for the parties. So really, that's, those criteria have to be fulfilled. A deed of separation or a judicial separation is different in the sense that on a divorce you can remarry. And I suppose that's the chief distinction between separation and divorce in Ireland. Yeah. Okay. Cost-wise, though, if you do go to court and you have this adversarial, as you said, you know, yeah. system that is in place, how much could you end up paying? Say if you go to the High Court and you're fighting over property and cash and all that, if, if that type of thing is at stake? God, how long is a piece of string, more? I suppose, you know, in the High Court, I mean, 90% of cases would go through the circuit court jurisdiction, oh. but certainly there are cases that go to the High Court. You're talking thousands. Yeah. I mean, 10 to 15,000, <laughs> you know, a day, perhaps, if you're engaged with senior counsel, junior awesome. counsel. It's an awful, an awful lot of money. And I think there's the cost implications of going through the adversarial process, yeah. but there's also the emotional cost. And I think we're forgetting that when separation, divorce, and couples, are, you know, are going through this awful breakdown of their marriage. They're going through a grief, you mm -hmm. know, and they have, like, go through all of those stages. So in a way, it's a more humane way of approaching it, but both parties have to want to do it yeah. and, and, you know, engage it in that way. Nicola, I suppose 80,000 last year, that's a huge number. But if you go back yeah. maybe, I think it's 20 years ago. I don't feel so alone anymore. You are part of the statistic. You've been yeah. there. Yeah, no, I'm absolutely yeah. a statistic. Yeah. And uh, there's no right and wrong. I mean, it's exactly as uh, Giuseppe said. It's... There's no right and no wrong. It is, the system is the system. And it doesn't take people into consideration at all, like the emotional trauma that was yeah. spoken about. That's like 80, discounted. No, it's just it, paper. It, like it, 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 80,000, anything is huge. 80,000 euros. 80,000 spuds is huge. So 80,000 divorces, you're just, throwing in, you're just throwing in with the rest yeah. of them. And, and know, it just doesn't really, as you said there, think about... 99% of people like to think themselves as reasonable yeah. until an emotional response is thrown in the middle of it. So there's no reasonable then. And then the problem with that is that you know, when there is money at play and people feel aggrieved or emotionally yeah. distraught, I got that it can go my, horrendously wrong. My father gave us this piece of land, so I should take it and stuff but, like but that. But debts and, and divorce yeah. are the two places that people are determined. And 
the problem is the process isn't people friendly and people want their emotional mm -hmm. grief heard. And in the courts, your emotional grief is not heard. It's what? just I, facts, I, I, pure yeah. facts. Black and, black and, black and, and white, that's it, yeah. Facts. There's, a, there's a precedent set. That must, be, that must be very, there. very hard, though. So, well, I think for a lot of people, they expect to have all the grievances heard. When they get there, they discover it's just another process. Yeah. This is just a job to people. Just they don't care who you are. They don't care what your problem okay. is. Okay, well, I suppose, really, before you go into court, and I suppose this what we want to tell our viewers about today is, is mediation. And uh, what you're going to tell us all about is, is, is this uh, collaboration. Collaborative law. Tell, collaborative tell, us, law. tell us about the process. Yeah, collaborative law would be something uh, you might see, for example, on The Good Wife and on, on, on these sort of programmes. These American programmes where you see two lawyers sitting down and their two clients, the, the warring couple, if you like, around a boardroom table. And um, both four parties, the four of them, enter a, what they call a participation agreement to stay out of court. Um, so it takes the threat of court away from the background and they enter sort of meaningful negotiations. However, I suppose the, the only drawback to it is that you can't engage the same uh, solicitor, if you like, if you're, if you're going to go on to contentious litigation. Just to say as well about mediation and collaborative law, they are obviously voluntary dispute resolution mechanisms and you know, there is always a place for litigation if it's going to be you know, abuse or... Um, and any hint of domestic violence. So it has to be emergency protection orders. I think that's very important. Well, so when you sit down with you know, the two lawyers, say yourself in, in the position you were in and yeah. the other side and, and uh, the mediator, basically you will work out what you could be fighting about at great expense in a court. Isn't that right? Yes. I mean, at the end of the day, judges do their best in difficult circumstances, but they cannot micromanage people's lives. Yeah. So yeah. why not uh, dictate the speed of the process and have control over the outcome? Yeah both parties themselves. So I, I would urge... There, there's no difference yeah. in the two processes bar uh, a length of time. And our system isn't built to make this easy. You know, they want you to do it with due consideration to children. So yeah. the centre of everything we do, if there's children involved, is they the welfare of the children. Yeah. There's nothing else. Yeah. The, co the judge isn't interested in your needs, his needs. No. The, the judge, They're when just you trying to work the, it yeah. out. They Neutral. want what the best welfare of the kids and everything thereafter, yeah. where the house yeah. goes, what's the best yeah. interest of the kids. The whole process is yeah, built no. around the, the children. The, there's a very interesting email in here. You said that you have to go to court if you're getting a divorce. But this, uh, we have a person after emailing the show and says um, she wants to get a divorce without involving a solicitor and the fees that go along with it. Her marriage ended in 2000 and she was legally separated mm. since 2003. Her marriage was annulled by the Catholic Church in 2006. Basically, this lady wants a divorce. Can, she go in, can you go into court to get a divorce without a solicitor? I think mm. that's what she's... She can certainly act he, as he a... He or she. Yeah, she can certainly act as a lay litigant. Um, but, I mean, obviously, you know, the Law Society would always recommend independent legal advice to going into divorce. I mean, there are things like pensions and, uh, you know, it, it, there is no clean break system here in Ireland as well, so the word divorce is a bit of a misnomer. So certainly, is, is, is there one in other countries? Is it, oh, is, is it clear yeah, in other yeah, countries? Yeah, yes, there there is. Um, I'm special. sure it's something that might be reviewed and uh, there might be reform in that regard down the when line. When you talk about clean break, because you know it is legalese, you're saying that uh, one or either party can go back after a divorce is granted if somebody makes X amount of money in the future and look for some of that. That's basically what you're Technically saying. Technically speaking, Technically. however, there, 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 there is a case law there, uh, Maura. There was a particular case back in 2011, it's, a, it's in, in, in mm. the statute books, uh, where the full and final settlement clause was held to be pretty watertight. So um, the, the job of the judge isn't going to, to redistribute any wealth. Proper provision is the key phrase, really. Okay. You know? How much does mediation and this collaborative law, how much will it cost yeah. people watching today that want to okay. work it out in a non-adversarial kind yeah. of way? Well, you're talking probably between €50 Euro for a mediator that's probably not, maybe not a lawyer mediator up to anything like to 450 for a top firm lawyer mediator. But it sounds a lot, but if, if, you, if, you're, if you're looking at the costs of actually going to a contested court hearing, the, yeah. the, the savings are about 60% in my view. Mm -hmm. So how much could you get a divorce for, though? Oh, an, an hour. Oh, an hour. Yeah. Yeah. An hour. Yeah. Oh, an hour. <laughs> how much? What is the cheapest divorce you can get in this country at the moment? Probably, in my, in my view, as, as, yes, as a family as law practitioner, I think the, the, the cheapest, uh, if we're talking about financial cost financial. only, would be to go through mediation or collaborative law okay. and have it ruled on consent. And, and that's the simplest way of mm -hmm. doing it. Yeah. And what are you talking parties, about? Have no solicitors yeah. involved at all and, you yeah. know, go in and have it agreed. No, I'm just wondering, <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering how much, though. I know, Nicola, but I mean, are you talking about 2,000 or 3,000 or what? Yeah, are you talking? It, could, yeah. it could be. It could be absolutely, euro. yeah, absolutely okay. around that. Yeah. And it, it, uh, a lot of it, just very quickly, uh, it happens around the New Year and Christmas. Mm. It's an unfortunate thing, isn't it? Yeah. Really, is, is, um, it, is it people say to themselves, OK, it's a new year coming up on the 1st of January, here we go, we'll get, I'll, I'll have a I think wipe this slate clean and go for it? 
Yeah, I think so. And I think, I suppose, that if they had been contemplating maybe perhaps issuing proceedings, I mean, they're not going to send a letter to their wife or husband just before Christmas, you know, so it's mm. quite an emotive time. So January tends to be a very busy time, anecdotally anyway, mm -hmm. certainly. Now, Josita is going to okay. stay with us for the whole show, so get those questions in. Yes, you're very welcome back to the show. We are talking about divorces and more. the more civilised the divorce is between the couple, the easier and it is on the head, the heart and the wallet. And uh, we have loads of people getting mm -hmm. in contact with the show. Stephen emailed the show says, What happens when your wife, a foreign national, lives in a foreign country and has no intention of returning ever? Mm. How does a divorce work then? Mm. Um, yeah, that would be a difficulty, and yeah. you know he should get proper legal advice in relation to it. But in general terms, um, he would if, first of all see if he could establish an address to have have the person served or his wife served mm -hmm. the papers. But eventually, he may be able to get a divorce in absentia. But uh, he would need to get proper legal advice in relation to that mm -hmm. exact yeah. circumstances. Keep, keep those questions coming in. We have really, really interesting ones. Can a divorce be granted if you've been separated for four or five years, but uh, your ex, but my ex won't cooperate? We get the question to. The answer to that question. We are talking <laughs> about a divorce here today, actually, on a more serious note. <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> we have a We have a solicitor in with us today. Can we just add uh, one question that a lot of people are, uh, Josefa, are uh, ringing in and texting in to ask about DIY divorce. John got in touch. He said, I used DIY divorce and the divorce was amicable and no pensions or property involved. Is there such a thing? There is such a thing, and there are companies that do DIY divorces, but obviously I would say proceed with caution. I mean, it, it's not going to replace independent legal advice, and often they might act for, for both people. You know, I, I have concerns about the potholes down the road in relation to it. Okay. Yeah. What about uh, somebody else got in touch and they said that um, if one person basically is unfaithful, will that affect the fact you're going to court when you're getting a legal separation? Unfortunately, uh, more this is one of the myths uh, that need to be dispelled and uh, Section 20 of the 1996 Act talks about conduct and whether or not it should be taken into account. Mm -hmm. um, and they say that it should only be taken into account if it's unjust to disregard it. But conduct... Uh, it's is not taken into account. Well, I, I would say in general, in most circumstances, an affair won't be taken into account. A simple run-of-the-mill mm -hmm. affair, if you like, if there's such a thing. Um, but gross and obvious behaviour will be taken into account and ancillary relief orders can be made on that basis. But, but in general, no is the answer? No. Okay. I would say no. We are talking uh, about divorce today yes. and actually we have family law expert uh, Josefa Madigan with us. Josefa, so many texts coming in oh, because really? of course we're yeah. talking about, what is it, 80,000? People? Yes, I suppose, yeah. Divorced yeah, in, in the last... From the census, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. in the la and, and how many years in the last... In, in 2011, I think 2011, it was, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's a lot. Uh, one here. Um, is an English divorce recognised by the Irish courts? It will be recognised um, under Brussels too if there's a common nationality between the parties and if either party was habitually resident in, in the United Kingdom. Okay. The foreign, um, yeah. Uh, also, I, I mentioned this earlier on. Can a divorce be granted if you've been separated for four or five years but the ex won't cooperate? Yeah, you can't stop somebody divorcing yeah. you, Dahi. But you can prolong you can the whole. You, you can make it difficult. But, but is, is there any period of time, okay, there's 10 years, okay, you have to, the other person has to sit down. Is there any time uh, limits like that or no, anything? There's no time limit like that, but you can, it, there's motions that you can bring in court. I don't get too legally yeah. about yeah. it, you know, to, to get somebody to um, engage in the process, yeah. Uh, my sister, this is Alison via email to us. My sister is currently going through the process of mediation. She has another two and a half years before she qualifies for divorce. Surely waiting four years is completely out of date. This is the law in Ireland that you well, have to exactly. be separated. Well, exactly. You know, and I, 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 I have to say I agree with that. And I, you know, I, I sit on the Law Society Family Law Committee, and one of the proposals we put to the Law Reform Commission is in relation to that point, because uh, if you're, uh, I think you, yeah. you know, people that are separated have to wait four years before they can get divorced. Need a referendum. To change Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Four yeah. years is a long time. Right? It is it's ridiculous. ridiculous. Like, yeah. And it is really, it's in other jurisdictions, it's even in Britain, it's mm. probably about a year or so, is it, just It is, yeah, and, uh, exactly. And in, in America, the same, it depending on the state. But it's also two sets of costs. And then having to go through the tedium, you know, the acrimony again yeah. for everybody in swearing affidavits and means. So, no, I, I do think that that has to be overhauled. Because I'd imagine, say, people want closure, you know, say, four, four years. Could just, yeah. they, you go through the emotional breakup mm. first, and then, okay, you, you've actually separated. Both parties are going separate directions, yeah. but still they can't get a divorce yeah. for years. And as Josefa said as well, the clean break system, which we don't have, we don't have a clean break system in this country. So that's another thing that should be addressed. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, divorces will, will be in 17 years only if you look at it that way in June of this year. So I suppose the rationale behind the four-year gap was maybe 
you know, because it was, it was only by half a percent in the referendum that was actually passed. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we sort of get our heads around that, you know. Okay, but Josefa, if we're primarily talking about uh, mediation and collaborative law, give us a mention of your book. Appropriate Dispute Resolution in Ireland by Josefa Madigan. It's available in Hodges and Fidgets and yeah. online. Lovely stuff. Ladies, thank you thank very you much very for being much with us today. Well, Correctly.